Radio. And now, Ham Radio Concepts presents another exciting amateur radio video, keeping ham radio operators informed with a thorough look at the new products. Now, here's your host, Eric, KJ4YZI. Hey everybody, this is Eric with Ham Radio Concepts. And I was in the market for a all-in-one SWR power meter. Uh, you've probably seen it in a few <laughs> previous videos, older videos. I had my little trusty Micronta dual band. Uh, you know, it's it's trusty. I mean, you know, I don't know how trusty it is, but it comes in handy in the mobile for uh, various uh, SWR and power functions. But then on my ham shack, I have to have a uh, HF power meter and neither one of those will do six meters so to combine it all together I got the MFJ 894 they call it the giant SWR watt meter it has a three and five eighths inch lighted cross needle SWR power meter on the front so if you're having trouble seeing um, something like this is very easy to see even if your desk is a little bit large and you got it on one side you don't have to worry about this little tiny thing like this uh, and it will do 1.6 through 60 megahertz and then 125 through 525 so it will do the entire HF portion 6 meters and uh, 2 meter VHF 70 centimeter uh, 2 meter VHF 70 centimeter UHF um, as well as 220 megahertz so if you have 220 you can use that also uh, it incorporates it incorporates it all in one power scale is two watts, twenty watts, and a max of two hundred, with average and peak envelope power function. Um, it looks good on the desk, you know, in your ham shack. This will definitely uh, be something that looks good. Uh, the the meter accuracy they say is plus or minus ten percent full scale or better. Um, it's got two. RF sensors in it for you know the VHF UHF using the button up here so um, let me show you on the back here what the back looks like with the connections so there's two separate inputs and outputs for the designated band you'll see the two top are transmit and the bottom two are antenna so on this left side here 125 through 525 basically your VHF UHF you're gonna plug in the radio here and the antenna here and then if you want uh, 10 meters or 20 meters the transmitter here and the antenna on this side and your 12 volt DC input which is like very low I mean it, it does not use power the meter does not use power to uh, operate that's just for the light but it I mean that can be battery powered no big deal to show you the light on the back, I'll turn this on and I'll turn all the lights off. Look how nice that looks. Backlit LED. I like the the way these glow. <clears throat> this is not like a uh, the old style with the light bulb in the bottom that glares up on the top. That's that's really nice the way that LED looks. Um, it, it's almost like just a backlit, not a light bulb that's shining on the screen with a glare. So uh, it definitely does have a nice display on it. Let's hook it up and give it a shot. Alright, so I have my ICOM ID51 handheld uh, VHF attached to this. Alright, and um, the 5 watt handheld. Let me explain how this, this works here for those who are interested in why you need an SWR meter. Let me show you. I have an SWR issue. I can see it on the meter already. Alright, so the left scale, the black scale here, would represent forward power. The power you're transmitting to the antenna would be forward power. There's three different scales, a 200 watt scale, a 20 watt, and a 2 watt. And that would be represented by what you're selected over here. On the right side would be your reflected. And those three scales are 50 watts, 5 watts, and 0.5 watts. Now, you're not just looking at the 10 through 200 and the 50 through zero. Okay, I'm on the 20 watt scale. So in this scale, this in the middle, the second row there, there's little red hashtags or little red uh, hashes or marks. I don't know why I said hashtag. I am nowhere anything close to being anything familiar with Twitter. So excuse that. Um, so 
your forward power and your reflected power, where your needles intersect is your SWR, all right? My SWR is about 1.8. That's a problem because this dual band antenna used to be 1.1, 1.2. And if I go to UHF, uh, let's see. If I go to UHF, like this, watch my way out of whack, all right? I got an antenna issue, I know that, all right? Um, but what this is basically doing is showing me, if I count on the forward scale, one, two, three, four, just over four watts, like 4.2 watts forward, and my reflected is about a watt, what 1.5 watts. So basically, I'm transmitting my five watts only uh, over just over four is going forward, and uh, 1.5, let's say, is coming reflected, and that gives me my cross needle 1.8 SWR. Now, VSWR for those who are interested, again, is your voltage standing wave ratio. This is basically your match per se to the antenna and your radio and a high SWR means your forward power that you're transmitting not all of it's making it out the antenna you have power coming back down the coax into the radio reflected power ideally you would want to see zero reflected down here and all forward power that means all the power is coming out the antenna and none of it's coming back down the coax into the radio um, it's sometimes very hard to get with, with mobile installations and different uh, types of antennas out there. Sometimes it's hard to have a broad-banded antenna that will be flat on the SWR, meaning there's no reflected power. So a 1.2, a 1.3, that's, that's fine. You can run with that. But a dual-band antenna in the center of the band just about, that's 1.8. And, and I can see if I hold that, it's shaking around. So there must be some sort of... Uh, something blowing out there because it's or, or the condensation um, you know it's good to have it's helpful to have something like this on the desk because if you're just hooking one of these things up in line here and testing it that may change tomorrow when it rains that may change when you build up condensation or corrosion so having something like this on your desk if you're constantly changing power to make sure okay I'm set for 35 watts output on on PSK or whatever I'm getting my 30 watts out on HF you know, and then you change it. Um, I wouldn't use this behind an amp because it's only rated for 200 watts, but most HF rigs, again, are 100 watts. Um, so it's good to have this on the shelf, but uh, I need to investigate my SWR problem. Now, if I went to say a 200 watt scale, the scale is gonna be too high really for what I'm measuring because um, you know, it, it's, it, you wanna be on a lower scale. If I go to two watts, evidently, you know, obviously it's gonna peak out the meter. So a 20 watt scale showing me one, two, three, four, counting the red hash marks on the left, just over four watts and reflected power would be one and a half. So I'm losing some power there. And uh, if you'd really want to test power, you'd want to do it into a dummy load um, so that it's perfectly matched or, you know, it's, it's a dummy load. It's not, uh, it's not affect, you know, you're not having SWR issues like I am, including coax and all that stuff. Um, SWR ideally on an analyzer should be tested at like the feed point um, if you're tuning an antenna uh, but the coax you know nobody a lot of people use it just at the end of their coax to see so they can tune it with the coax in line and see what the radio is seeing but uh, to give a little bit of a lesson and a little bit of a, a product review on this this is a great piece and uh, you'll see it more in some future videos I have a 60 watt mobile that I'm going to make a video on and that thing was doing 60 watts all day long. Uh, so, uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe for other videos. And 7.3 from KJ4YZI.